Hi, and welcome to this video about ASP.NET Core. Let me introduce myself, so if you have any dubs problem or you need my support after this video, you can contact me directly without no problems. I'm Hugo Lattanzi, I'm a technical developer, and you can contact me using my blog. As you can see here, you have a contact page um, with all my information. This is the first way, otherwise you can contact me directly using Twitter. And this is my nickname. And that's me. Let's start to use ASP.NET Core. First of all, we have to prepare our developer machine. So, let's go on www.asp.net website. And as you can see here, there is a download.net Core page. Okay, here we have different options. Windows, Linux, Mac, and Docker. This is because ASP.NET Core can run on top of Windows, Linux, or Mac, and you can use it, whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to use Windows, and uh, on Windows, you have different options. The first one is Visual Studio 2015. You need the update tree installer, then you install the, the tools, and then you can start to get a new project. Otherwise, you can use the Visual Studio 2017 release candidate. That is, is what I'm going to use in this video. Or if you prefer the command line, so you have the command line, you can use uh, your favorite editor like VS Code, Atom, Sublime, uh, Brackets, whatever you like, doesn't matter. Okay, let's start to open Visual Studio. This is a, a release candidate, so it's not the final one, but it's pretty good. Okay, let's start with file, new. Project. On the tree view on the left, we have a new section called .NET Core. Choose this one and then select ASP .NET Core Web Application. Tab folder is okay for me now, and then let's go on. Okay, we have to choose the empty project right now because we are going to see just the structure, and we are we will add some new feature later in the next videos. In just a few minutes because Visual Studio is downloading all the needed packages from NuGet and is preparing the folder and all is needed. Should be ready. Not exactly. Oops, mute to this exception. This is a release candidate, so it could be a bit buggy. Buggy. Okay, we're ready. The error is here because I don't have Bower installed on my machine and also node is needed to run Bower. So let's remove the file, doesn't matter for now. Okay, now we have to understand why this project is different from the previous version of ASP.NET. First of all, we have new, new files, a strange folder with a globe right here. In the property folder, we have a JSON file. Let's start with the program CS. Okay, because ASP.NET Core runs on top of .NET CLI, and .NET CLI is uh, able to run just console application, also the, the web application is a console application. As all the console application on .NET, we have a program class with the static void main method, okay? And this is the entry point or the application. Nothing important here, probably we, we will never change this part, just in, probably we could change a bit of configuration of Castle in case we are going to use HTTPS as so a certificate or something like that, but you know, we don't need it right now. What is, is important to know here now is that we are going to create the web server here. And the web server starts here. And as you can see, there is a startup class that we have here. The startup class is the entry point of the web application. So program CS is the entry point of the application. Startup CS is the entry point of the web application. The startup CS is composed by two main methods. The first one is configure services, you can see it here, and the second one is just configure. Uh, configure services is needed to add uh, what you are going to use into your application. Because the ASP.NET Core is lean as you like, you can add what is really needed. For example, you need MVC or Entity Framework or whatever, you can add it here. Uh, as you can see also, there is a size service collection and the namespace is Microsoft.extension.dependencyinjection.add 
ASP.I service collection is, is the interface. This is because ASP.NET's core comes out of the box with, with its own uh, dependent injection container. Of course, if you prefer, you can use external, like Autofuck or whatever. But it's, it's important to know that if you don't need a special feature, you can use it and it works very well. And the configure methods is needed to configure your ASP.NET pipeline, so uh, develop an exception page, logging, um, middleware, and whatever. If you are not familiar with the concept of middleware, it's important to, to learn it. Uh, middleware is not new in ASP.NET Core, uh, sorry, in ASP.NET. Uh, we, we were using it also in ASP.NET Cla Classic, I mean with the ASP.NET MVC 5 or Web API. Uh, I wrote with my friend Simone Caretta a book for, uh, for Syncfusion. It's called Owen Succinctly. Okay, and you can download it from here for free. So I'm just suggesting you to read it and uh, get more familiar with, uh, with the concept of middleware because it will be, will be really needed uh, with ASP.NET Core. Okay, close this one. Let's go to see the web.config file. Uh, this file is needed just if you are running your application using IIS. Otherwise, you can remove it. And we will never need to change the file. It's pretty simple. Basically, we have to register an handler that is saying for every request here and every verb, please redirect. is a sort of redirect. All the requests to the sp.net core module. Okay? No, no more. Uh, www root is a folder that will contains all our static resources. I mean something like uh, uh, style sheet, so CSS files and uh, JavaScript images and uh, whatever is public. And launch settings.json is a new file that contains the configuration to run your application from Visa Studio. Okay, if you see here, you can run it using IAS Express or Web Application 1. Uh, because ASP.NET Core could be hosted also outside of IAS, you can use this one that is basically is using Kestrel. Okay, we can, maybe we can rename it to just Kestrel is a good name. In this case. Kestrel. Okay. If you go here, you see the, the name is changed. I choose Kestrel and I can run the application. Cause application is running here. It's working very well. Hello world. Okay, stop it. Hello world because oops, need to start up CS files. There is a mid in line middleware that is saying for every request print hello world. Nothing special for now. We here we can change some info about the hosting environment. We will see it later. The port, if you can open the browser or not, folds, for example. In this case, I'm going to run it. Again, as you can see, nothing happens on the browser. I can copy this link, go here, pass, and it works. I prefer to use folds because I keep the page open and then I stop our application several times during my job. Okay. I think also the launch settings you can change them from properties. Uh, let's see it. maybe build new settings, new resources, signing, references, debug. Okay, here. This is the environment, Castrol and IAS Express. Okay? Okay, that's all for now. We'll see you later in the next video where we are going to write some cool code. Thank you. Thanks for watching Getting Started with ASP.NET Core, presented by Ugo Latanzi and Syncfusion. To get free ebooks on .NET Core and other development topics, head to syncfusion.com.